Hey y'all, it's me, Andrea, with Sucks For You in Houston, Texas, and this is Succulents 101, a quick primer in succulent care for beginners. Welcome. I did want to take a quick second to uh, tell everyone thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, because I just found out this week uh, this channel now has over 10,000 subscribers, so I think that is pretty dang amazing, and it really just makes me um, feel good about what I'm doing and it's obviously useful and um, I, I know that that's one of the main things humans want to feel is like you know they're helping other people like um, they have a purpose and you guys have really made me feel like that I do and I am so thanks okay moving on getting started ready let's do this okay now classes in session um, we're gonna talk about how your climate and location come into play um, we're going to talk about light, water, soil requirements for succulents, uh, the right kind of pots to put them in, and uh, I'll go ahead and show you a few of my favorite uh, easygoing succulents that are, you know, I always recommend for beginners, um, even though I really still love them. Um, they're, you know, forgiving, they propagate easily. Um, yeah, I think everybody needs a feel-good plant, a plant that does really well, doesn't need a lot, and makes you feel good about... Um, yourself because it seems happy so hey you must be doing something right right um yeah i think those are great <laughs> i uh guess we'll just start now we'll start with light um most of the times i'm looking at uh helping people figure out what's going on with their plants especially beginners uh that they usually need more light or less water and between the or maybe a different container maybe some you know better dirt that drains faster um, and once we get those corrections made and figure out which one of those is they're they're missing um, they come back you know maybe a week later and they're like yo look it's so happy now and you know it's it's again most of the most of the problems can be corrected with um, more light or less water so just remember that okay so yeah let's talk about light really quick um, a lot of you guys are growing indoors up north so that means you don't maybe you don't have like a bunch of great bright natural light inside and um, I'm just gonna say it's it's probably a good idea for you to get a grow light right because succulents really depend on that steady supply of bright but gentle light um, and having a grow light in your home I have one on my porch because we get all these overcast days um, in Houston and you know sometimes I use it to warm my plants up in the winter time um, again I don't have a lot of good bright light inside I really don't have many plants inside um, but if you if you get a grow light and you have it inside your home you get to garden throughout the winter it could be snowing outside and you're just like having fun potting up propagating babies um, and the amount of succulents that you save uh, I think I think the lights will pay for themselves before you before you realize it. I know mine have, and um, I'm pointing over here, and I'll go ahead and I don't know if you can see. I'll, I'll put some pictures up of it. We'll get another shot of it later. Um, so yeah, having a grow light is just some that that extra guarantee um, and security, and having a good steady supply of light year round. Uh, as far as natural light goes which is what you know most of us are working with um you want succulents like bright and direct light and what that means is they're getting a lot of bright light but the it's not direct so keyword indirect um sun coming down like directly bearing down on them or hours a day will freak them out fry their leaves maybe force them into dormancy um or kill them <laughs> So you definitely want, you're going to have to figure out what that light means, what that bright and direct light means based on, you know, your situation, where you live, whether you're keeping them indoors or out. And um, it's just so important that that's kind of what I really want to start out with. Segulants really need a lot of light. And I do have some examples of what I can show you. Um, I'm talking about what you can tell is when a segulant needs more light, um, it will start what's called etiolating, um, stretching, and here's a good example right here, if I can get it to focus, 
you can see how the leaves have become stacked. Uh, the stacks of the leaves, there's more space in between. Um, it should be a nice, tight little rosette. Like, do I have someone to show you really quick? Kind of should be growing closer together. It's not the best example to show you. I should just maybe put up another picture. Okay, here we go. Looking at this angle, it's a little bit hard to tell, but if you see it like this, it's very obvious that the spacing between the leaves, um, there's, you know, they're getting more space in between the leaves rather than growing all compact together. And even the head is starting to point towards the sun. So there's a couple of things you can do, and that is, um, without cutting it, um, you can start to get it to look normal again and then chop it. Um, but yeah, you have the sun coming from this way and the best thing, I, what I've been doing for this guy is just to turn the pot so the head is facing away from the sun and then, you know, it'll naturally, as a heliotropes do, um, it'll start tilting back towards the sun again and it'll start correcting itself. And so if you don't have really good indirect bright light, the best solution to keeping your plants looking in like, uh, keeping their natural form is to give the pot a little turn every few days or so, okay? It's one of my tricks to keeping rosettes in good form and, um, you know, they're not perfect. They, they, you might not be able to get them back to perfect, but then at that point you can what's called top them and then propagate the leaves and reroute them and I um, already have a video on that and that's a little bit you know a little bit down the road you'll get there um, you'll probably be wanting to know how to do that pretty soon so I will be sure to link to the video in the description below for that um, and I have a whole playlist of succulent repair uh, demos <laughs> and those will definitely come in handy too now sometimes you can get too much light and at certain times of the year, especially spring and moving into summer, I actually need to open up these panels. They're just cheap white curtain panels I put up last year uh, to help protect some of the porch plants from too much sun. So, um, you know, I don't want them getting burnt on the porch. That would not be cool. And it's a very easy preventative fix. It helps keep me cooler too. Um, you can burn your plants having them indoors on the windowsill if that sun is too bright. You can also burn them with grow lights and I have done that before. <laughs> so just, you know, watch your plants, especially when you're moving them into new light. So if you think your second lights need more light, what you need to do is, um, instead of just giving them a ton of like, a ton of full sun or, you know, a ton of bright light all day right at once, you want to acclimate them to getting more sun um, and by to do that you want to take take your pot um, move it from wherever you have it find your new bright location okay keep it there for a few hours a day maybe less to start on the first couple of days and then um, watch your plant look at the leaves make sure they're not showing any signs of either drying out or uh, spotting like dark spots. Um, I actually, unfortunately, very recently left a pot of plants out in the sun and I think it might have even rained a little bit on them and, you know, I have a picture of what happened and I'm just kicking myself for it because it's such a pretty plant. Um, and it'll be fine. It's just going to look kind of funky for a while until the old leaves get replaced by the new growth. And as long as they don't mess it up again. So again, you know, things happen and you just keep going, do some research, make some corrections and try again. That's all we can do. Okay, now I want to talk about dirt and having the right soil in your succulent pots is just so important. Um, you'll hear me talk about that a lot and um, it's kind of one of the things, like if somebody sends me a photo of their plant asking me what's wrong with it, I'm looking at the dirt in the picture. I say like, ooh, that looks pretty brown, that looks a little bit too organic. You're going to need to add some uh, drainage materials, such as, I have some examples here, 
Um, we got pumice is a good one. Pumice is like perlite, but it's not puffed. Um, I have some more information on that on my website, sucksforyou.com under the care guide. With my soil recipe on there where I get all of my ingredients from. So um, be sure to check that out. Again, it's going to be linked at the bottom for you. It's all it's in the bottom of all my videos, the care guide. Uh, we have expanded shell, shale, S-H-A-L-E. Um, it's really pretty, I think, for using as a top dressing. And we'll talk about that in a second. And then we have, um, this is Turfus. Let's spill it. A porous ceramic soil conditioner. Um, what Turfus is a brand name. And I order my pumice online. I have found a couple of places where I can start getting it locally, thank goodness. Um, even though I really love this company, it's from General Pumice Products. Um, and it's just, it's beautiful stuff. And you can get different sizes. I get the 3 16th fines. Um, there you go. That means they're about 3 16th of an inch on average um, in size. You can get smaller. They make some pumice that's really tiny too, like this, and bigger. So I do like the middle one. Um, soil, soil, soil. So, if I was to use this in a pot, and let's say I had a pot about this big, I would add maybe two small handfuls of dirt. <laughs> Sorry, you can't really see it. I'm going to just pour it. Two small handfuls of dirt to this. Okay. And then I'll mix it up. And then the end result will be something like um, this, which is not very brown there's a lot more of the drainage materials in there than dirt sorry the lights getting crazy um yeah so if you send me pictures of your succulents please um uh, understand that i am gonna look at that dirt and other people are too i've seen other people jump in on comments when people post about it and you know asking questions on facebook groups or whatnot like what uh what's wrong with my plant and like some people just be like oh your dirt is way too brown you know and they're just trying to help and um but it's true and i'm just like oh i'm glad somebody said it <laughs> so uh, again there's a recipe on my website how i make my soil it's a lot cheaper in the end to do to make it my way than to go out and keep buying those bags of miracle grow whoever else is selling it um second light and cactus mix that you're just gonna have to like add a bunch of stuff to anyways to be able to use it so yeah and uh i guess real quick i'll tell you why uh second light roots take in water by uh kind of absorbing water from the moisture and they air around their roots they don't suck it up like a straw or like some other plants you know when you take a cutting of ivy and you can propagate them in there. Um, that's why you can't do that with succulents because any water that actually gets in the plant um, can cause it, the cells to rupture and then you start getting uh, bacteria in there and root rot and stem rot and all kinds of stuff. So um, the more air you can provide around the roots, the better um, because when you water all that oxygen rich water is gonna bypass the roots and go through your pot and out the bottom because all of your pots are moving on now. <laughs> all of your pots have to have drainage holes. Um, I may sound like a, a stickler on that, and I am because I've. I'm sorry, but it's so rare that you hear of anyone who has a good experience with potting in a container that doesn't have any holes in it. So, um, porous. Let me grab. Here, I'll just grab this guy. Um, unglazed terracotta, okay, uh, big old drainage holes in the bottom, and if you need to cover the hole, which you probably will, hold on, you can use something like screen, see it, that one has screen in it, um, I also save all the bulk, these are the gar sleeves that garlic comes in at the grocery store, so save those. 
and um, there's other projects you can do with them. Maybe we'll talk about that sometime. There's, uh, you can use burlap. Um, you don't want to use anything that doesn't have like, you know, good holes in it like this. You don't want to use cloth. You don't want to use paper. I would say burlap is the only um, fibrous material maybe you should use um, to cover the holes. And even then sometimes they can get a little bit uh, moldy, mildew. So um, it's just so important that your pots have drainage holes. I even have, we have a Facebook group and in the sidebar it's like, if your pots don't have drainage holes, go and change that and, <laughs> and then ask ask about what's wrong with your plant. Now maybe that's not always the problem, but um, it's, I mean, you come in somewhere, you got a knife in your back and you're like, my head hurts. I don't know why. It's like, well, maybe the knife in the back isn't why your head hurts, but let's just go ahead and like take that out. <laughs> it's an extreme example, but I am an extreme pro holer. Yes, pro holer. Pro holer. And I hope you will be too. Oh now, I really recommend starting out with unglazed clay pots for your succulents because the glazed containers even if they have you know a lot of drainage holes and fast draining material inside um, they do retain water more they're not porous like these guys you can even kind of see where the water it's probably like calcium minerals um that the pot is leaching out because it's porous and that's a good thing so have fun but make sure that if you do find a cute mug or something like that you do want to make sure that there's drainage holes in the bottom so that's something else you can put on the list um grow lights and a power drill with a you know a ceramic bit carbide bit things like that um it's a lot of fun to you know make your own pots so you know have fun with it just be be careful before we talk about watering, there's one more thing I wanted to talk about as far as uh, pots go and potting them up. Um, if you want to use a top dressing to finish, give a really nice professional finish look to your plants, go for it. But stick with the material that you use in your soil. Stick with the drainage amendments because they aren't going to trap uh, moisture down in the dirt like aquarium gravel or a bunch of pretty, you know, glass pebbles and stuff like that. So can use shale, turfus, more shale. This is just turfus on here. I really love it. I just love the finished look. Um, pumice by itself, just a nice white contrast to your plant. And these pots I really love. They're, um, you know, handmade by some really talented people. This is from Hammerly Ceramics and they're one of a kind. This is from The Pottist. So, um, and like I said, this is plastic and I use all kinds of materials, but you know, I'm just always, they, they know what's up. They're not going to give you a pot that doesn't have drainage holes in it. I don't even have to worry about it. This guy has some mega drainage hole. Look, look at that. This looks like a chunk of something found in an ancient forest. I love it. So yeah, have fun potting them up, but really try to stick to the containers that are going to be um, more suitable homes for your second ones. It's just less for you to worry about, right? Really all that's left to talk about in this video is watering and as far as the frequency goes, um, that is determined by how fast your soil is drying. Your, so your soil should be drying out within a week. So if it's not, um, you're going to be more at risk for root rot, stem rot, bacteria, bad things happening to your succulents. You really want the air to be drying out around the roots within a week, so just keep that in mind. Now, to modify your soil, uh, you can add more drainage materials, you can change your pot, you can add more drainage holes. All of those things will help your soil dry out more quickly. Um, if it's still not drying out within that week, um, you might want to try a smaller pot and watering a little bit less frequently and less deeply. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So here's one of many containers I've used <laughs> to water with. It's just an old tequila bottle with a 
pour spout on it and that's good for doing less doing more shallow waterings um it's a big can like this you're just gonna like dump a lot of water on it at one time and you know this way the water's not going to run all the way through or it'll go through but it's not going to flood the pot using a bigger can um can cause the water to come out a little too fast and splash everything everywhere um, I actually use this can more to refill my smaller containers um, just so I have something handy but I'm just gonna show you I'm gonna water this Kalancho Humilis try and pour it slowly on top I'm gonna wait and it should start coming out the bottom um, if it doesn't I might give it a little bit more but this is a glazed container, so we definitely don't want to overdo it. So I think that's going to be it for now, for that guy. Um, one other thing I like to use, if I need more water than my little tequila bottle has, is something like a old this is for uh, pesticide spray and whatnot. But I actually just put water in it, and you can pump it up and walk around with it and spray everybody it's great for propagations and seedlings and you know anything you just want a really you know precise amount of water uh coming out without flooding it um or knocking it not knocking the babies up out of the ground with too much water um i do that all the time <laughs> so yeah that's how you water and again to understand how often you water Make sure your roots are drying out within a week. And if not, change your pot, change your soil, water less deeply. Okay, I hope that makes sense because it's really important. And if anybody has any questions about that, please let me know in the comments below. And last but not least, as promised, some of my favorite succulents for beginners. They're just so easygoing and a lot of them propagate really well too. Eventually you're going to want to learn more about propagating, um, repairing stretched out succulents, uh, treating them for pests like mealybugs. I have a lot of videos um, covering that information for you guys and um, you know just you know watch after you watch this video I know that you're going to be like there's going to be some little bells going off like oh I know what I probably did wrong with that guy or I know that plant should have been in more sun than I had it in you know so you're going to be able to take this information and figure stuff out on your own you'll start noticing things that you go through in the past you're going to see other people having the same problem and you're going to be like oh 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 <laughs> I know what that is you're going to be able to help them too so again that's what all this is about and um again once again just thank you so much for liking and subscribing and leaving your comments and letting me know when i'm helping um thanks to all 10,000 plus of my subscribers um I don't know, i'm not nervous i don't know what you're talking about um that's it's amazing and i'm just gonna stop right there because i'm so grateful i'm gonna wanna go i want to go edit this video and get it out to you guys like by Monday. I think I can do that. All right. Thanks guys. <laughs>